Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Many of you have been asking me, how do you get into stocks and which ones to buy? And in this video, I want to show you exactly that. And honestly, on a day like today, I have to say, looking back, we could have all just honestly bought Tesla and done nothing. We could forget about research and analytics and reports and valuations and technical analysis. You could literally just buy Tesla and forget about it. But that only works when you have 2020 hindsight vision. We got to look forward and we got to have a balanced portfolio, in my opinion, going forward. And that's what this video is about. I do want to start with getting a few things out of the way, though. Number one, this is not for day traders or swing traders. This is a portfolio for long term growth. Number two, this is not a portfolio for dividends. So if you're trying to retire within the next you know, couple years, this is probably not for you. Uh, this isn't for building a dividend portfolio. In my opinion, you worry about dividends when you're going to retire. You can always take stuff from growth and put it into dividends in the future. I prefer that over just writing dividends and paying the taxes in the meantime, especially during a pandemic when dividends are being cut anyway. Dividend investing is not my favorite. Number three, yes, some stocks are at new all-time highs. And some of the stocks that I show you, you're going to see and you're going to think, why would you even bother now? They're so high. And here's my take on that. When the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates to the level that they have lo lowered them to and they print as much money av as they have, the ocean of the stock market has pretty much no choice but to kind of float up because money's so cheap. People kind of basically build in valuations from further and further into the future and the ocean of the stock market kind of goes up. Unless, of course, you're an anchor stock. And by anchor stock, I mean like you're stuck at the bottom of the ocean and you're not really going anywhere with the tide because, well, we're in a pandemic and maybe that stock is a restaurant stock or, you know, some sort of retail or uh, travel and entertainment stock. Be careful with those, obviously, because those are anchors during a pandemic. But otherwise, everything has sort of been in this sort of ocean that's been rising. Now, obviously, that creates risks. And the more the market goes up, the more expensive it gets, the more risky it gets. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Then, what I'm going to show you is also, you know, very important to always remember that if you invest in something like this and the next day it's a little bit red, you can't get upset. <laughs> and if you're going to get upset, which is very, very normal, this might be difficult for you. So what I'm going to show you is a portfolio that I started yesterday with $25,000. And then this morning I put an extra $5,000 in. And the goal would be in the future to put maybe one to two thousand dollars into that pie every so often you know maybe it's a week every two weeks or something like that and the goal is to kind of let that ride growing with maybe adding a thousand bucks every week something like that maybe five hundred dollars a week totally depends on your budget and your finances what you've got available to invest my goal is to keep my bank account broke so i try to scrape together everything i've got and i put it into stocks which i know that sounds crazy and it's not recommended for everybody it's just what i do Anyway, the fifth thing that I want to remind you of is that what I'm going to show you is an M1 finance portfolio. And even though this video is sponsored by Webull, a stock trading platform that has some incredible features, especially for pre-market hours and after market hours, uh, which I encourage you to open a Webull account as well, deposit $100 and get two free stocks right next to the link to get life insurance in as little as five minutes. But M1 Finance is going to show you how to build a portfolio, in my opinion, a lot easier and more intuitively than individually picking stocks with Webull. And six, in this portfolio, I will not be including any bonds or foreign stocks. I don't understand foreign markets as well as I believe I should to start investing in them. And also because rates are so low, I'm not putting bonds in here because yeah, rates could go up, but we're not expecting rates to go up until 2023. And we might introduce some bonds closer to maybe 2021 or 2022 and that sort of late period. This portfolio I expect to sort of evolve over time. Number seven and final warning. In my opinion, don't dump all of your money into one portfolio because it sounds like a good idea to you today. I always recommend if you've got, let's say, $10,000 to invest, start with 2,500 bucks and then do 500 every week or something like that and slowly get in. That's gonna be a lot better for your psychology so that way if it goes down, you feel okay because you're buying a little bit. If it goes up a little bit, you feel okay because your portfolio went up a little bit. Maybe you're not necessarily buying on that day but you're buying on the red day and so on. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to pull up 
M1 Finance, and I'm going to show you this portfolio that I made. It is a portfolio of about 46 stocks. And generally you want it to have a nicely diversified portfolio, even though I'll, I'll, there's an asterisk on that. Uh, to have a nicely diversified portfolio, not have too much risk in one stock. You generally want as many stocks as you can have, but you typically get a lot of the benefits once you start having 30 to 50 stocks. 30 to 50 stocks is a good portfolio where maybe you're getting 95% of the diversity of the S&P 500. Uh, that's because you are spreading out your risk a good amount with 30 to 50 stocks. It's certainly not as spread out as like 500 stocks with the S&P 500. Now, I personally don't like the S&P 500. Uh, maybe it's just a personal thing. Like the S&P 500 excludes Tesla. Maybe they'll include them one day. And it also gives more weight to tobacco, to tobacco companies over companies like Starbucks. Uh, to me, I don't know. That's just not an index for me. The, the NASDAQ, by the way, you know, that's another one. That's not a bad option. You can invest into that with ticker symbol QQQ. You get this cross section of 100 technology and biotech stocks. But personally, I don't like biotech and I don't like pharmaceutical stocks. I don't like the industry. I don't understand it. And I'm not going to say something like, oh, well, people always need their medication. Must be a good investment. You know, that, that might be end up being an okay to invest, but it's not what I believe in. So it's not for me. And I found that in order to feel comfortable with my investments, I've got to believe in my investments. And that way it's a lot easier to get through the rough times. That doesn't mean invest blindly, but at least believe in the decisions you're making. <laughs> now, uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. If you wanna follow along with this, you can go to metkevin.com 1337. I'm calling this the Meet Kevin's 1337 Index. And you can kind of pull this up on your phone and kind of look at it yourself. So metkevin.com slash 1337. And this is what you're going to find. Let's go ahead and pull it up on screen right here. There you go. This is the Meet Kevin 1337 Index. Yesterday, I put $25,000 in. Today, I put $1,000 in. And you can see the portfolio is up about $371. And this is the cool thing about M1 Finance. I was able to put the stocks in here that I want. And then I can uh, select what percentage I want for all of these stocks. Now, full disclaimer, if you end up signing up for M1 Finance, they do send me a referral thank you. They did not ask me to make this video, but because I personally have the vast majority of my stock holdings with M1 Finance, yeah, I've got stocks with Robinhood, I've got stocks with, uh, you know, uh, Webull. I do keep most of everything at M1 Finance though. And because I found it so easy to use and so enjoyable, I'm making this video. They did not ask me to make this video. All right, let's get into the portfolio a little bit. So here it is. You can see I've got my favorites, Tesla, Amazon, Apple, and Lemonade up at the top. This is possibly a little heavy on Lemonade, which if you don't like the idea of uh, investing in a company that just IPO'd, the cool thing about this is you could just go down here and go minus two, let's say for Lemonade. And then maybe you want to just add one to PayPal and Microsoft or whatever. I'll go ahead and put it back to what it was though. Okay, great. So then you can kind of see it's tech heavy here up front. We've got PayPal, Shopify, DocuSign, Etsy. We got some real estate exposure with Redfin, Square, Activision, Google. These are almost all the stocks that have done very well consistently throughout the pandemic. They'll probably continue to do well throughout the pandemic but they're not gonna give you that big surge when a vaccine or treatment comes out, in my opinion. And that's why I do have some exposure, not a lot of exposure, but some exposure in here as well to stocks like Disney and JP Morgan. Lowe's has been doing very well, Domino's, Intuit. Some of these companies have already been doing well throughout the pandemic, Peloton, for example. But here are some that have kind of been lagging. Target had a nice jump up, but it's kind of been stuck. It's almost waiting for the pandemic to be over and malls to open up again. Simon Property Group is the largest mall REIT in America. And I figure, hey, a 2% holding into that, especially at these inexpensive prices. I don't believe the Simon Property Group is a has a large bankruptcy risk, certainly not as much as like an individual restaurant chain might. So I like the idea of putting Simon Property Group in here. Uh, Home Depot, United, UPS, you know, shipping, Wayfair, Walmart, and they're getting ready to compete with Amazon. We've got Honeywell, Invitation Homes, and some home builders in here. So you can see it's nicely diversified across a few different industries. We've got a lot of technology, 
but we've also got, you know, some retail, we've got some real estate in here, we've got uh, the hotel industry in here, but you know what we don't have is Dave & Buster's. That stock that even though I'm worried that there's a bankruptcy risk, I am going to go ahead and add Dave & Buster's in here. BlackRock just today announced that BlackRock has a 15% stake in Dave & Buster's. Uh, that is up from 10% in January. So it seems like their dollar cost averaging down. And if BlackRock is not too worried about the bankruptcy risk, then you know what? Maybe that's a sign that we can ride on some coattails. Now, that's usually not how I recommend investing. I've done full analyses on Dave & Buster's. I don't think they're going to go bankrupt, but there is a chance. So we're going to keep them at just 1%. They will do very well though, if a cure comes out. That does mean though, you can see at the top here that I'm at 101% out of 100%. So let's go ahead and remove something. Let's take 1% off of Domino's. And there we go. We took 1% off Domino's and we're gonna save this. I know that this is a little Tesla heavy, but I'm very happy being Tesla heavy. There it is. So now the portfolio has adjusted and the market's still open right now. And it looks like right now the this portfolio was uh, just added about another $50. It's now up $420 on today. Now, usually when we have these kind of big surges within one day, especially being led by Tesla, just be careful. You know, Monday when the stock market's open again, uh, the market might be red. Although you might not actually trade any money into this because you're probably watching this over the weekend or whenever you're watching it, maybe it's after hours. You might not trade into this until next week or you might not at all. You might do it in two months or three months from now. Don't worry about the short term, focus on the long term. And in my opinion, this has good exposure for the long run. Now, if there's anything that I would cut out of here or reduce or something that I'm keeping an eye on doing next, which by the way, this is the kind of stuff I talk about in my courses in the links below, kind of my latest moves in my live streams and in the Discord chat and stuff, which you could join the public section of the Discord chat for free in the link down below. But I might not be so jazzed about sticking around with Nikola forever for the long term. We'll want to keep an eye on Nikola. I don't know how I feel about Cisco, the food processing corporation. So those are two I'm keeping an eye on. I've got some good research into them. I was okay adding these one percentage, one to two percentage uh, fractions here, but uh, those are some that I might end up replacing. But in the meantime, this portfolio, uh, again, obviously led here by Tesla, but overall has done very well over the last day. Don't judge it though, based on what it's done over the last day. Consider just building your own portfolio like this. You could even use this as a starting point. You can click the little invest in Pi button when you go to metkevin.com slash 1337. And then you can minus out 10 of them and put your own 10 in. Maybe you want the biotech in there. You know, maybe you want the Walgreens and the CVS. Maybe you want some more restaurants. Maybe you want the Cheesecake Factory in there. Maybe you even want to add an index fund into your own index. Isn't that weird? <laughs> you could actually do that and you could go over to manage pie, edit pie, and let's go ahead and add a slice and take a look at this. We could go, let's type in a Vanguard. Let's see, here we go. Vanguard, uh, S&P 500 value ETF. You could do a bunch of different iShares if you want. I know some folks like investing in ARK, uh, which you can invest in ARK funds as well if you want. You could pick one of those. And it's kind of interesting because here, if we take FinTech Innovation, done and we add this to our pie. There we go, it's in there as a 1% holding now. I'd have to subtract 1% off of something else, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I don't actually want that in there. That was just to show you, there you go. And uh, yeah, so check out that link, metkevin.com slash 1337, because this is a very elite index fund. <laughs> it's not really an index fund because it's not tracking an index, right? But it's more like uh, a, a group of stocks that in my opinion are, are stocks that I like. I think they'll do well in the long term. I can't make any promises for the short term. And honestly, I can't make any promises over the long run either. But if you like this, uh, consider checking something like this out. And my overall recommendation to you is if you have not bought stocks yet and you haven't pulled the trigger yet, take a small amount. Do set this up, put a hundred dollars in. And the cool thing is when you go in and once you set this pie up and you go in here and you press buy and uh, you go ahead, let's see, uh, and, and oh, I got zero dollar, I got five cents available. <laughs> but anyway, whenever you have cash in here, let's say you put 
$1,000 into there, right? And then you hit continue. It'll put it up for trading in the next trading window, which is probably like 7 a.m. the next day, uh, or actually 6.30, they moved it up to 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, right when the market opens. And then they'll automatically take that $1,000 and they'll automatically distribute it through the percentages that you put out. I found that to be really cool. And you can sort of see that here because we've got Tesla at 8%, it's got $2,500. We got Lemonade at 4%, it's at $1,200. And some of these have moved throughout the day, but you can see some like an uh, NVIDIA over here is at 841. We go down here, we see a bunch of these at like 280, 270 and so on. Uh, and yeah, it gives you a little bit of an idea. I think those were the one percenters when I bought them uh, the first time I opened this up. So. I hope you enjoyed this somewhat a tutorial video and a little bit of a guide for you. Hopefully it helps you and I wanna see you build wealth out there and I think assets are one of the best ways to do it. So if you found this video helpful, consider liking it, consider sharing it and folks, we will see you next time.